Hey guys, Kurt Thorson here with Bow Hunter Die, and today I'd like to share with you five saddle hunting tips to make you a more efficient and skilled saddle hunter. Unless you're a complete stranger to our channel, you've definitely seen me over the last couple hunting seasons wreck havoc on whitetails here in the Midwest out of a saddle. Over the past three seasons, I've learned a whole heck of a lot when it comes to saddle hunting. So whether you're new to the mobile saddle hunting game, or maybe you're a seasoned veteran just looking for a handful of tips and tricks, I think you've come to the right video. So let's dive on into it and talk saddle hunting. So what's a good saddle hunting video if we don't start it off with talking a bit about some gear? Obviously the saddle hunting and mobile hunting communities are full of gear. So first tip for you guys, I'm going to break down a handful of the necessary items to get yourself up and running when it comes to saddle hunting. First and foremost, you're going to need yourself a nice comfortable saddle. Obviously this is a part that you do not want to skimp on as it's the piece that holds you to the tree. You want to make sure that you're comfortable. You want to make sure you have good adjustments to make yourself comfortable on some of those long uh, fall sets. So, First and foremost, get yourself a nice comfortable saddle. Here I've got the tethered lockdown saddle. It's new for 2023. Really looking forward to getting this thing out in the field here actually relatively soon. I'm going down to Kentucky with Justin and Dan for some Kentucky uh, velvet whitetail. So I'm looking forward to breaking the saddle in. First with that, second, you need yourself a good platform. Platforms are great. They come in all shapes and sizes. Find yourself one that you believe is comfortable and good for you. Another good piece of equipment is your sticks. It's essential. The only way you get up the tree is with a good set of sticks. I've got the tethered one sticks here. They're super lightweight and they're super packable. As you can see here, they're streamlined, they're small. With a set of eighters, I can get myself up to about 20 feet or even higher if I stretch myself. Uh, another essential piece of equipment is the backpack that you carry your gear in. I love this Treehouse 38 from Mystery Ranch because it's got the slot in the front that I can tuck my saddle platform into, as well as some straps down below to hang my sticks off of. Uh, this pack is a little bit big, probably for most people, but as somebody that self films, I've got a whole lot of camera gear. I'm constantly bringing cameras into the woods, so I like to have a relatively decent sized backpack to carry all of that gear. So to move on from that, another big thing when it comes to your saddles is your tether and your linesman belt. Obviously it's the only way that you get up into the tree safely. And so one of my tips when it comes to gear with that would be get yourself some sort of rope ascender, whether it's rope ascender or a Kong duck like this one here, press it knots work all right. I don't mind them. They work safely. They are good for that. The only thing I do not like about them is they tend to be a two-handed operation. The nice thing about these rope ascenders is you can stretch yourself around the tree here, clip in safely, and then it's simply a one-handed operation when it comes to tightening and loosening your ropes. Instead of having to two-hand do the Prusa knot in the dark when you're kind of struggling, um, this helps tremendously. And so this is one of my biggest takeaways for both the rope up top when you've got your tether as well as your linesman belt when you're climbing up the tree. As you can also see here with my saddle, you can probably tell that I have my saddle uh, linesman belt girth hits directly to the saddle itself. I just find that that it's easier for me to pull this thing out of a pocket. I keep it uh, looped up right there and it's easy access ready to go. Another big piece of equipment that you need is something to hang your gear from. Um, many times on public land, you can't screw in pegs or anything like that. So Tethered has the his strap where you can hang all sorts of gear from it. Multiple gear loops to get yourself around very large trees and hang all sorts of gear. They've also got the fold and go uh, hanger to hold your backpack, your bow, whatever. Um, another piece of equipment that I'm constantly carrying is uh, the gear ties. Just a simple gear tie. You can go to a hardware store. I keep a handful of these in all my packs and stuff. It's just great to hang stuff. Maybe you got to get a limb out of the way if you can't cut the limb out because you're on public land. These things are probably the most versatile piece of equipment that I have and I have them in everything. So those are a handful of the important pieces of equipment that you need to get yourself off and running. Another thing that I just thought about now is get yourself a nice doyle. Uh, I used to run just a figure eight paracord around my hand. 
I don't know how many times I got caught up on brush. It would get knotted, just it was a nightmare. So I got myself a nice Doyle uh, hoist here to hoist my bow up. It's a retractable hoist, so I can hook my gear down below here, climb up in one climb, get to the top, get set up, pull my bow and gear up from down below, and the rope retracts as I pull it up. So those are a handful of great gear tips, and let's move on to tip number two. Now that you've got the essential gear necessary to get yourself up and going and saddle hunting, the next thing you need to do is climb the tree. But before you do that, and my second tip, is going to be how to pick the right tree for your setup. Much like a tree stand, right-handed and left-handed shooters are going to have a strong side. So before you climb the tree, try to think a bit about what is your strong side shot. Look at the tree, determine which direction you think the deer will be traveling to and from, and utilize the tree to your advantage. When you're hunting out of a tree stand, traditionally you're sitting with your back to the stand. For a right-handed shooter, the strong side would be off the left side of the tree. If you're a left-handed shooter, obviously the opposite, you'd be on the right side of the tree. When it comes to saddles, you're facing the tree 180 degree flip. So it's something you need to consider before you get in and get into your spot, get into the tree and realize you're set up backwards in the stand. There's a tough side shot on a saddle that is a bit difficult and it takes a little bit of uh, dancing around the tree to get to. Not impossible, but you wanna avoid it as much as you can. Make yourself comfortable. Another big thing that I love about picking the strong side for myself is utilizing the tree as cover when you're up in the saddle. If I know that the deer are coming from a certain direction likely, I'm gonna to try to put the tree almost at a 45 degree angle so I can hide behind it when I'm in the saddle and pop out and make my shot count once the deer comes onto my strong side. Um, it's, it's something that I believe is one of the biggest tips and I know I messed up quite a few times getting myself into a handful of trees right off the bat when I started saddle hunting. My third and probably most important tip that I have for you today is to make sure that you've got yourself a solid organized system when it comes to packing your gear. Not only is your backpack uh, very important to make sure that you get your platform and your sticks out to the field, but also utilizing and organizing your side pouches on your saddle itself. My most important thing when it comes to getting up and down the tree is obviously my linesman belt and my tether. I make sure that this left pouch on my saddle is 100% for my tether and linesman belt. I make sure that with every hunt, whether I'm going into the tree or out of it, that I put my ropes back in the same pouch in the same order every single hunt. That way, when the next hunt comes, there's no guess game, there's no wondering where this rope is or that rope. When you're in the dark and you're in the heat of the moment, having everything organized is absolutely critical to being an efficient saddle hunter. My left pouch, I make sure to pack my linesman belt right on the top. That is so that way I can pull it out, throw it around the tree and make sure I can get up the tree safely. Once I get up to the top of the tree safely, I can then focus on getting my tether out with no obstructions. That way, making sure that the linesman belt is always on top of the tether, that this step is always smooth and effortless. I then wrap my tether around the tree, get safely attached to my bridge, and then I can disconnect my linesman belt and put it back into the pouch for then, at the end of the hunt, line belt back around the tree, and then I disconnect from the tether, and this goes into the pouch first. So every single hunt, I make sure that I keep this organized system so that way I can get up the tree safely, quietly, and efficiently. My fourth tip today is gonna to be utilizing your comfort adjustments that come with your saddle. Whether it's adjusting the tether height, the platform, or on your saddle itself, there's all sorts of different comfort adjustments that you can make so you can sit longer while in the tree. Obviously, as you know, the longer you can sit, a lot of times the better activity you can have. So if you can stick it out in the field for a longer sit, you might have some better success. Starting off with the saddle itself, a lot of different companies are coming out with expandable saddle bodies, uh, different channels for the bridge itself to seat in, so that way you can get some different angles, as well as the tensioning of your uh, tether itself and the height. One of the most important things I feel like I've seen a lot of people mess up is the height of the uh, tether itself here. 
Many times I see people with the tether sky high over their head where it's a super sharp downward angle and it creates a lot of pinch points. And the thing you wanna minimize the most is pinch points on your body in the saddle. It'll help you sit longer. So what I have found personally is that if I can get the tether in a spot that's between my forehead and my chin, I'm gonna be that much more comfortable when it comes to sitting in the saddle for as long as I can. Um, another big thing when it comes to comfort not all trees are straight. So being able to look at a tree at which direction it's leaning and throwing your tether around in a certain direction. Here I've got a tree that is slightly leaning to the left while I'm looking at it. Every time I'm in a tree that's leaning towards the left, gravity wants to pull you this direction, downhill. So what I make sure to do with my saddle is take the tether, throw it around the tree clockwise, and feed the rope through so then that way the rope is pulling against and that way I'm not falling downhill. The rope's kind of stopping itself at that point and helps you stay way more comfortable in the tree without the feeling of flying around the tree. Another big thing is the platform itself. Getting yourself into a nice seated position, making sure that when you get up the tree, you stand on the top of the step itself, and you can actually utilize your toe to drop the stand or the platform just a little bit, and it bites into the tree that much more. This is huge when it comes to taking some of these shots that are at some really goofy angles. That way that the saddle platform doesn't kick out from under you and you have big issues there. So seating the platform properly is big. On the Predator platform here, there's also a lot of adjustment to make sure that you get that platform relatively level. At times, I also like to have that platform almost just slightly downward, so I'm not catching my boot on the edges so much, but I'm keeping it more on uh, kind of a flatter portion of the saddle platform for some of these all day sits. So those are a couple quick tips to keep yourself comfortable um, while hunting up in the saddle. All right, guys, my fifth and final tip for you today is to make sure you practice how you play all the way down from packing your tethers and your packs to making sure you know exactly how your gear is going to perform as you climb the tree in daylight or dark. Make sure you practice how you play just like you shoot your bow all summer long to make sure that it's dialed. Make sure you try out your gear before you use it. Nothing worse than getting out to the tree and realizing you don't have some important piece of equipment or worse yet, not knowing how to use your equipment and then it becomes something that becomes a safety issue. So make sure you practice how you play. Practice in the dark, practice out in your yard all summer long. Make sure you know how your shooting angles work and make sure that you know exactly how your equipment's gonna perform. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Next time I see you, hopefully I'll be shooting a buck down in Kentucky in velvet out of this saddle. Remember guys, bow hunter die.